Ladies, happy Friday. It's about 10 o'clock. I just got done with a Pilates class. I did not want to come. I was not in the mood. I didn't feel good. I was tired and I was cranky and hungry and just everything where you're just like, staying home right now sounds like amazing. But I told Parker, I was like, maybe if I go, I won't regret it and I'll feel better. And sure enough, every single time that happens. And I'm pretty sure you guys have heard people say that before. It's just totally a thing. When you don't want to work out, you do it and you try it for at least three minutes. And if in those three minutes you still don't want to do it, you can back away, not do it, and just, you know, you made a good choice. But in those three minutes, you feel so good that you just pull through and finish your workout and it's amazing. Before we get into the shenanigans of this weekend and the craziness and a brief update, I do want to thank Slim Chillers for sponsoring this weekend vlog, you guys. A, I found these sunglasses in a drawer when we were moving back into the kitchen. They're from FabFitFun, do you guys remember? B, our kitchen is done? I'll tell you why in a second. And then C, we are back from Mexico. We went on our trip, we came back, we feel refreshed. We came back to a very, 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 very sad kitchen news, which again, I will update you in the future. But I do want to take a brief, brief moment to share something with you that has been weighing hard on me. Seeing YouTubers like drop off like flies off of YouTube, just like quit, really has like kind of put a thorn in my side because it's something that I've been contemplating doing for the last two years is just packing it up and doing something else because I think there's a very dark side to this type of business that is very detrimental to our mental health. I think that the perks are great. I think that there are so many freedoms about being self-employed and being able to work from home and making our own schedules. It's one of those things where it is so good that the bad has to be really bad too, you know? <laughs> it's never just, if it's something super amazing, there has to be something super dark to it. If there's something that's like mediocre amazing, then there's like mediocre bad to it. It always is balanced. It always has to have balance. You just can't have all the beauty without the pain, you know? I don't know what I'm doing right now, trying to get all this sun. So, seeing so many YouTubers just disappear, it just leads me to believe that it's probably for the same reason that, you know, I think about it all the time. And so hear me out before you guys jump, jump down my throat about what I'm gonna say. It, it, it will come full, full circle. The general concept is people forget that they follow you because they're interested in your opinion. I don't follow them because I'm interested to hear theirs hear me out. So when you find someone that you follow on social media, you either find them relatable, you find them entertaining, you find them um, kind, you find them funny, you find them highly intelligent and they just motivate you, you find them motivating. And so that initial love connection happens because as a subscriber or follower, you choose to support them. But I think we've created this culture where people think it's it works both ways. So because you follow me, I have to be interested in your opinion and I have to support your decisions and I have to be okay with you abusing me. And it doesn't work that way. And so I think that gap has completely overlapped where it was like, for example, I follow Natalie Munoz on YouTube, Instagram, everything. I support her, anything she comes up with, anything new she comes out with. April Athena is another one of my favorites. And I follow them because I care to know what they're talking about. I care to know what Natalie's buying on Amazon. I care to watch what April's doing on Amazon Live because I find them very fascinating, very interesting. And to me, I have a parasocial friendship with them. That's just what it is. But because I esteem them, I don't necessarily feel the need to impose my opinion or judgment on them because it's my choice to support them. And so it's kind of gotten down to this point 
where people think, I can attack you, I can be mean to you, I can leave a toxic comment, and you're not allowed to reply to me because this is the part of the game. Like, this is part of the show. You know, it's no longer this community of I follow you because I, I love you, I support you, and I, want to, and I want to see you flourish. It's I'm following you because I have easy access to imposing myself, my opinion, my judgment, and my criticism on you, but you're not allowed to say anything back. And so I entered into this like spar with some random no-name person on my Instagram this morning it went as far as to she started a new Instagram with no followers and no picture just to leave me a mean comment so the way my Instagram is set up is you can only comment if you follow me so she had to go as far as to create an account because I had already blocked her at a different account create an account follow me just to leave me a mean comment. And when I replied, I was like, you know, this is extremely flattering. Thank you for following me just to be mean to me. She's like, well, because you blocked me at another account because I said that you needed to put tile under your cabinets. And so obviously the logic in me is, no, I didn't block you because you said that. I blocked you because you said something rude. I never block someone just to block them. You gotta earn getting blocked. Sorry you guys, my camera overheated. But what I was saying is, I think to get blocked, you deserve to get blocked. And I think ultimately as a driver of the car, I'm allowed to say who I want to be in the car and who, who I don't. So it doesn't matter if you don't think your comment was hurtful. Plus let's say common sense, right? You got blocked, which means, hmm, something's up. There was definitely a mean comment. And then I'm engaging with you again because you left another mean comment. So let's uh, see what the common denominator here is or what's like a common theme. You left a mean comment, you were blocked, and now you're leaving another mean comment. So that leads me to believe that, yeah, it was justified for me to have blocked you the first time. <laughs> But it got me thinking, I'm like, well, yeah, I can definitely see how debilitating this type of job can be. And I can also see how the culture has changed. And I can also see how no matter how much time passes, you really just shouldn't engage with someone that's contributing negativity because it's like, um, you know, wrestling with pigs, you get dirty, but the pig actually enjoys it or uh, playing chess with a pigeon. Doesn't matter how good you are at chess, the pigeon's gonna jump all over the board and dance around on it like it won anyway. This is just something where you can't reason with stupid. You can't argue with, with, with people that are just in that state of mind or mindset or mind frame or moment in time. Like They want to spit out the negativity. They want to soil the pool. And so no matter what you do, you really can't engage with it. And having engaged with her, like I always have this hope that if I say something, it's gonna click and be like, oh yeah, that really wasn't necessary or really, that was mean or wow, I really shouldn't have said that. I just always have this hope <laughs> and I just love to think that I can give them the benefit of the doubt and say, you know, that's not very nice or think about what you're, no, but it just, you really, there. in 10 years, I haven't been able to win an argument with someone on social media. So, it's just one of those things where I had this moment today where I was like, I can see why so many people are quitting. And I'm also embarrassed that I engaged with this person. And I also, I felt like, it's like a bee, you know? A bee stings, but in order for it to sting, it has to sacrifice its life. And so, is it really that important for you to sting someone? if it's gonna cost you? I don't think so. And so me engaging with a negative person doesn't make me any better than them. In fact, it makes me just as bad as them. And so it's one of those things where it just, it feels yucky and it feels yucky and worse some days when you're already having a bad day. But I think ultimately a very friendly reminder and I don't know how to make it sound refined. I don't know how to make it not sound rude. I don't know how to make it sound not uncouth. But remember, if you follow someone, 
you're interested in their opinion. We're not interested in yours unless we ask. So when I'm like, guys, do you like my Amazon purse? Like, I genuinely want to know. But if you start a social media account and you want me to follow you and support you, I will. But I can promise you, guarantee you one thing. You're not gonna get a negative comment from me. You're not gonna get a sassy comment from me. You're not gonna get criticism or judgment from me. But you will get my opinion if and when you ask. Otherwise, just remember that, you guys. I follow Danny because she is a train work on wheels and she makes me laugh. I follow Danny because I love her dogs. I follow, but if you remember, the reason you followed me is because you're interested in seeing what I'm doing, what I'm saying, or what I'm wearing. I'm not interested in what you're doing, what you're wearing, what you're doing. It, it, I didn't follow you. Does that make sense? And do you see how that could sound rude? It's not meant to sound rude, but it's like, I'm the one that's delivering a service that you hired that's free. <laughs> Please don't abuse me. <laughs> it doesn't feel nice. <laughs> so I'm currently running around doing some errands while Parker goes to his doctor's appointment. I went to Pilates. I just went to the ATM. I went to co-parents house. Right now I'm at Kroger because I want to buy a watermelon. I want a big giant juicy watermelon and I'm so dumb. I placed a grocery order and the minute I placed it, I was like, oh, I forgot a watermelon. So Parker and I have been doing this um, drink. It's basically like watermelon and mint and then any sort of mixer, shooter, alcohol or whatever and a squeeze of lime and it's the most delicious summer cocktail ever. And when we got back from Mexico, we were in such a like state of zen. It was so much fun. The travel back was a nightmare. And then we get home to a kitchen that had four days of work. Not, not, not a single day was done on it. Let me rewind. That totally sounded like an ESL moment. We went out of town. They had four days to work on our kitchen and they didn't do anything. So we got back on Monday and all our entire relaxation that we gained or recovered on vacation went out the window when we had to just fully put on blast this builder. It was horrible. You guys, I have never seen Parker so upset. And the way that this man can raise his voice get his point across and make someone understand without being crass is impressive. He lit a fire under these guys' butts and in two days they finished the kitchen. Like that's all it took. Can I hire Parker to yell at everyone that's upsetting me? <laughs> so I'll show you guys the kitchen in a second. It's not really done, like I said. There's some things that are missing, some things that are out of stock and things like that. But I mean, we're moved in and we can use it. And Parker actually asked the builder to kind of set up or rig our old countertop uh, stove so that we could use that in the meantime because we don't ha have a stove. Having ordered, in a, having ordered a stove with the oven attached like a pull-in stove, like the standard stove as opposed to the, the countertop and the separate ovens that we had. I haven't regretted it as much as I have now that I don't have access to an oven. Like I know I'm gonna love the stove, but in the meantime, I don't have an oven and I realize how much I use one, it's crazy. Growing up, my mom never used an oven. You know what the oven was for? Storage. You had to empty out that oven for like an hour in order to use it. So that's probably why I never learned to bake because the oven was never accessible. <laughs> so realizing how much I use an oven, I'm kind of impressed with myself, but I'm also handicapped because I'm so dependent on an oven. Anyway, I think that's what I wanted to share with you guys this morning. That and this amazing tank top. So I posted it on Instagram after I found it. It's like a sock company that does like all Pilates kind of stuff and Parker saw my story I guess he does watch my stories. He saw my story and ordered it and surprised me with it when we got back from Mexico Which was good because he diffused the bomb, you know, I, I'm the bomb. He, he diffused me <laughs> I think that's the update. It's been a while since we've chatted I wanted to start off strong. I want to kind of just plant that seed that, you know, I made a mistake too. Like I'm always preaching kindness, kindness first, kindness first, kindness first, and responding to negativity with negativity is never gonna get you anywhere. But if you follow someone that you regard, that you esteem, that you like, that you enjoy, please let them know because we are facing times where the negativity outweighs the positivity. 
cancel culture, you know, calling people out, thinking that you have free access to just saying whatever you want about them because, you know, they're not a real person. We are. We are real people and we're real people that have to take care of our children and we're real people that have to go home to our spouses and we're real people that have to be emotionally healthy to function and when we're constantly getting beat up, it is crippling it is debilitating and it's not nice so if I annoy you if I upset you if you don't like me if I'm spoiled or whatever all the things I hear on a daily basis if you feel that about me just unfollow like it's that easy so many people do it every day you guys there has been zero growth in my channel for years now and I'm okay with that as long as it's people that want to stay here that's all that matters to me I'm not gonna change who I am I'm not gonna change the way I speak I'm not gonna change the way I think about things but you have a choice on who you react to. You have a choice on on if you're kind to someone, if you choose to be kind, if you choose to be negative. You know, and like I said, you follow someone is because you're interested in their opinion. And if their opinion is no longer important to you, just don't follow them. But don't don't follow your instinct to want to poison the well. Like that's that doesn't help anyone. And here's the thing, and I think this is something that we commonly forget is it feels good in that moment to tell someone, God, you're annoying. God, you're spoiled. God, you're entitled. It feels good in that moment because you're scratching the itch. But what happens when you scratch that itch a lot? You hurt yourself, right? Like you peel off that first layer of skin. You you cause a sore. You hurt, you hurt your skin. You cause physical pain to yourself. That's the same exact thing that you're doing when you say something mean to somebody is you're putting that negativity into the world and it always always comes back and the worst part is we don't get to decide how when why or anything or the severity of it so put out good into the world put out kindness into the world because it's gonna come back as good as it feels to scratch the follow-up is never fun you guys so anyway that's my TED talk for this morning I'm gonna go inside and get a water <laughs> The fact that I'm at a grocery store for a watermelon says everything about me and nothing about the grocery store, okay? <laughs> hey you guys, good morning, happy Sunday. All right, so time to confess. Time to pay the piper. No, that's not, that doesn't apply here. So, okay, here's my kitchen, kind of. <laughs> So I took a break yesterday. Saturday was one of those days where I had to like internalize my triggers because you guys know the whole odyssey and the saga with this kitchen has been a little frustrating. And so Friday, I checked in with you guys. We had to run some errands. Parker and I ran a few more errands after I talked to you guys. But then yesterday, I was like, you know what? Today's gonna be one of those days where I could be really productive, where there's no mom, 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 mom. The kids aren't here. Parker has some stuff to do in the garage. Like, it's gonna be a day where it's just me and I can figure out what I need to do. I haven't been feeling very well since we got back from Mexico and I think it has a lot to do with all the indulgence and the drinking and eating whatever we want and then eating takeout for almost seven weeks because of the kitchen and things like that and so, I think it just all caught up with me. Well, yesterday I got up and Parker was organizing the garage and I decided to make breakfast. And our blinds were supposed to be installed yesterday between eight and nine in the morning. So it's 10.30 and I tell Parker, I'm like, can you just text the guy and ask him if he's gonna come today? Because just, I want my blinds this weekend. I'm tired of people seeing my butt cheeks. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so he texts the guy and he literally walks in the back door. And it was just one of those really small details that adds to your pile of marbles or like pile of stones and everything just tumbles down. I was like, I'm just so tired of people having open access to my house. Just get the f out, you know? I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna sit on the couch. I'm literally going to sit on the couch all day and no one's gonna ask me for anything with the exception of the dogs, but senior pets, you can't turn them off, you know? Like a child, you could stick it in front of its iPad and tell it to go to its room with some Play-Doh. I know it's risky and it's like gambling, but you can. But with a dog that's on medication and needs, you know, constant potty, I can't, I can't turn them off. So th there's an exception to my, I just wanna sit on my butt rule. I, I just sat on, I sat on my butt all day. In fact, I accidentally fell asleep on the couch for about two hours. And sometimes your body just needs that. So I don't take that for granted. I don't take my alone time for granted. I think I have learned to not guilt myself in those moments that I just need. 
And to be quite honest, Parker has been off of work for two weeks. He took the week off before Mexico and the week off after Mexico. So we have spent a lot of time together. And I think both of us just needed a little bit of just not space, but space, you know, like we were still at home, but he was kind of doing his thing. I was kind of doing my thing and it was good. It was a really nice recharge. Well, this morning we are waiting for the boys to come back. And I have to tell you, I am about to have an affair that was coordinated by my loving husband. Wait for it. I just, I had to clickbait this, you know, I had to like clickbait set it up. So if you guys have been following me on Instagram for a while, probably here on the vlogs, I don't remember if we've talked about it here on the vlogs, probably not, because then you guys give me about wanting a baby. So I have mentioned wanting to hold a baby for a long time. <laughs> Not because we want a baby. Parker and I are all babied out. Like we love babies, but we love to give the baby back. So our family is complete. It feels 100% complete. Two boys, two girls, two teens, two young kids. Like we're in all the phases of life at the same time right now. So we're, we're maxed out on children. And I think that the best way to describe it is our family feels complete. But Parker and I love babies. And I told him, I said, I don't know how you're gonna do it, but if you love me, you're gonna find a baby for me to hold. And this man, let me tell you, he's my Hercules. He found me a baby. So <laughs> one of his friends from work, one of his closest friends from work had a baby recently. And I think the whole first time mom feeling that really like exciting, but also scary time during a pandemic, I think, I think that has kind of dissipated a little bit. And so Parker was audacious enough and brave enough to ask his friend, hey, do you guys wanna have lunch with us? We'll take you to lunch. We really wanna meet the baby. So you may see a baby in the vlog later. I have to ask their parents for permission, obviously, because the internet is a terrible place. But I bought the baby a bag of gifts. I'm a Sagittarius, you guys, I can't help myself. The generosity in me is oozing and I just can't control it. I've gotten really good at it. I've gotten really good at it because being a Sagittarius, but also a two, an Enneagram two, it hurts your feelings a lot when you're so generous and people don't say thank you. <laughs> I don't want gifts back, I just wanna thank you. But anyway, that was, a, that was me digressing as usual. So I was telling Parker, I'm like, I don't know if this is weird, but when I found out we were gonna meet this baby boy and I was like super excited, I wanted to be useful in a way because first time moms, man, I'm telling you, there's a lot of stuff we need to talk about. Things they don't tell you before you become a mom, things they don't tell you before you get pregnant, things they don't tell you before you get married, things they don't tell you before you get divorced. It's a long list. Do you guys hear Ernie? She knows we're inside and we're talking She's outside and she's real upset. Do you want to go grab, let's go grab her. Sophie! Sophie! Come on. Let's go hang with Bubba, come on. Hey Parker, you gonna let me have an affair with the baby? <clears throat> Just for a little while. <laughs> let's go get her. Why are you so loud? It is Sunday. It's nine o'clock. People are trying to sleep in. Why are you being so much trouble, huh? Why are you being so much trouble? Come on. It's gold, mister. We got some more bad news for Double, which I don't really want to talk about right now because we're talking about babies. But, yeah. Tapito, ven. Double. Double. I know you guys are you guys are waiting to see the kitchen, but I'm in the baby mode right now before the boys come home because then they're gonna want to touch everything. You know how kids are like they just, they don't know how to look with their eyes, they have to look with their fingers. So <clears throat> I was telling Parker, I was like, it all just came like it just came barreling out. What's the right expression? Like it all just surged. All of a sudden I remembered all the things that saved my butt when I was a first time mom. And then I reused those tricks when Daniel was born. And it was the only way that I could shower. It was the only way I could eat a warm meal. It was the only way that I could have a little bit of time to myself. And so they were really stupid 
inexpensive items that as a first time mom, literally will change your life. So if you're here, we're gonna talk about baby products. Like, did I think I was gonna be the almost 37 year old with her complete family talking about ba baby products? Here we are, do you wanna see? You guys, I was so excited. I went to get my tripod so I could do this. I need my hands to get excited about things. Okay, let's talk about some silly things. But actually, they're, most of them are like, really? That was really that important? Yes, this bag is full of things that were that important. And the best part is that the price point is like under 20 bucks. Maybe under 15, if I recall. So, bibs. This is just stupid, you guys, bibs. I know it's like, oh yeah, babies need bibs because they get food all over, no. Bi bibs are pivotal because, pivotal, does that mean really important? Bibs are really important because when babies teeth, they drool. But they don't drool like a little dab of drool. No, it's like a faucet. They full blown are a faucet. And it's a lot easier to replace a bib than to replace a whole onesie. Babies aren't chilling in tank tops and shorts. They're usually in a full piece. Either it's a onesie pajama, a onesie onesie, but it's a whole thing. It's a whole gymnastics outfit to, to get put on and off. It's like wearing, it's like wearing a bodysuit. You know, that's why I don't wear bodysuits because then when you go to the bathroom, you have to be doing all kinds of, you, you get where I'm going with this. It's a lot easier to change a baby's bib, especially when they're teething, than to change their whole outfit. So having an excess of bibs, you need to do that. I found these, they're organic bamboo, like bandana bibs, so the baby's gonna look cool because it looks like a little bandana. They look like a little, like a little Western, what are those called, partner? Like those Western cowboys that would like go stick them up, partner? Bandits. A bandit! <laughs> it's like a baby bandit. He's gonna look like a baby bandit. And the monochromatic look is trendy now. I mean, when my kids were little, it was like the more color, the better. But now it's like monochromatic baby themes. Okay, we can do that. So I just got a 10 pack of bibs because dude, you just have a baby. You don't really have time to be doing laundry all the time. So extra is better when it comes to onesies. Um, bibs, burping blankets or receiving blankets, whatever you use to cover yourself in the, because they do it a lot. <laughs> then I got the baby two wet bags. Wet bags, another thing that you're like, God, Danny, that sounds so basic. Hear me out. A wet bag is a polyurethane lined zipper bag that is completely waterproof. Now, the reason this is useful is because I still use mine from when my kids were newborns. Polyurethane line bags are super important because if your baby has a blowout at Target, you're not going to throw the onesie away. You may want to. <laughs> and you're not going to put the onesie back in the diaper bag because it's covered in baby poo. If your baby vomits in the middle of baby gym, you're not going to put the vomit back in the diaper bag. So a polyurethane bag is super important, or a wet bag, they're called wet bags, because you carry them in your bag, they protect everything else in your bag. I think my kids are dead. Oh, please. False alarm, Ernie is just a pain in my ass. So the bags are really important because you don't need to throw your onesies away. All baby stains can be removed, I promise. Uh, you don't need to throw your onesies away. You don't need, people will not know that there's poo clothes in your diaper bag. It keeps the smell inside. And the best part is that when you get home, you open this up and drop it in the washer and everything is machine washable. I hang dry mine just so that the polyurethane lasts longer. The plastic part, it shouldn't really be put in the dryer. You can, but I just hang dry mine and 10 years later, mine are still good. So these are always a good idea. And the reason I got two is because when one is dirty, you have a backup. And like I said, you don't have time to be doing seven loads of laundry like I do now when you have a baby at home because you have more important things to do like smell their adorable, magical coconuts. Can you tell I'm excited about today? So another thing that's kind of silly is a $2 rattle. These are called barbell rattles, I think. Anything that is two, it looks, it's a barbell shape. So two balls on the end and then a narrow grab in the middle, like a narrow opening in the middle. I don't know if this is something that was particular to my kids. Mateo was obsessed with his and I just gave his to Daniel and Daniel liked it too. So I think it has a lot to do with the shape of it that the baby can actually grab it 
it makes noise, it has bright colors, and it's something that is super affordable so that when you go you know, to grandma's and you forget it there, it's a $2 rattle. So it's one of those toys that the babies really, really love, but if you happen to lose it, it's not like an iPad where you, you know what I'm, where I'm going with this? So structurally, it's fun for baby. They can play with it from the minute they're baby baby until they're, gosh, Daniel used to pack his in his little lunch box. That, you know, they carry things with them wherever we go because they have a codependency to, to hoard. <laughs> they have this like codependency to bring their baby hoard everywhere they go. Ours had a uh, yellow in the middle and then it had two little turtles on opposite sides, a blue turtle and a red turtle. I still remember and I'm pretty sure I kept it somewhere in like our little memento box. So anyway, affordable toy, but it's an, a toy that the babies kind of gravitate toward. Another thing that really helped us, which is kind of funny, is links. Links are designed for you to hang toys off of baby carriers, strollers, wagons. So they're colorful links that look cute, but they are useful so you can attach like a pacifier to it or they're blanky or something. However, you don't need to attach anything to them. These are two to four dollar toys that are so entertaining. I would just hang a few from the bouncer and that's how I would shower. I would hang a few from the stroller that, you know, the carrier that attaches to the stroller and I could do my grocery shopping. I would attach a few to the stroller if we were at a restaurant and they just kind of bat around and play with them or even just stare at them and we were able to eat at a restaurant. So links don't get enough credit because I think they're seen as a single use item like well, yeah, they have a purpose. You link stuff to them. No, the links themselves are very useful. And again, if you forget them at grandma's house or if grandma helps you take care of baby, she can have a set of $3 ones at her house and baby's not gonna know the difference. You know what I mean? Anyway, speaking of being able to eat a hot meal, this saved our life when our babies got to high chair age or restaurant age. When you're at a restaurant, the baby can't really stay in the stroller or the carrier for, for a long time. They do get uncomfortable. They need to be, you know, wiggled around a little bit. And so any flat surface that you guys have, these toys come in many different brands. There's different bakes, models, like cars, and they all have a suction at the bottom. So you basically suction it to a flat surface. Baby bats at this or you do if the baby's still not at that age where it has that mobility, no, motor skills, <laughs> mobility. <laughs> what is this, 4G, no? <laughs> Even when your baby doesn't have those motor skills, this is something that you could grab your taco and with the other hand, bat at the little bear, the bee, and you're, you okay buddy? And your baby's entertained. So I think these, these the price can vary anywhere from like six bucks to 15 bucks. So it really depends on the brand. A lot of parents, especially first time parents, are very set on having themes. Like everything has to match for their baby. But I think once you get to baby two, you're like, I don't care, just let me eat. <laughs> so I hope this works for our little guy, but everything is super useful, I think. The next thing is a uh, white noise machine. It has to be portable. Ours wasn't portable and when we would forget it, it, we had to plug it in. So we'd go to restaurants and be like, can we sit next to a plug? It was pathetic, you guys, because we didn't know stuff like this existed. So it was super embarrassing. But these are portable. They clip onto the stroller, they clip onto the carrier, they clip onto anything. In fact, you could even tuck it next to your baby's little rib, just right, kind of next to them. And if you're at a loud restaurant, if you're at the mall or whatever, and it's during nap time, baby's not gonna know the difference. A white noise machine sounds excessive. It sounds like a unnecessary extra item, but it was one of those things that sounded excessive, but that actually was very useful for us. So I could go in and sneak into their bedroom, put away laundry once everyone was asleep, and I wouldn't wake up baby. And that is super important because you never know, that was coughing, can you hear him? You never know if you're gonna have a light sleeper or if you're gonna have a deep sleeper. I had one of each, and let me tell you, the light sleeper, is 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 not a light sleeper anymore so he gets a little he gets a little um credit back <laughs> talking about mateo by the way and the last thing which is the best thing you're ever gonna buy if you have a baby and i promise you when i say this it's the best thing you're gonna buy when you have a baby it comes 
in different brands, different colors, different fabrics, but they all are the same concept. Crinkle paper. Babies are like cats. Like you could buy a cat a present, but the cat wants the box. You could buy a baby something and they want the tissue paper. So baby paper is actually all they make. The brand is all they make, is this kind of stuff. It comes in super many different, a million different patterns, like little cars and trains and things like that. I just went with a cool little simple pattern, but it, many different brands do the crinkle paper concept. This will keep your baby entertained forever. <laughs> and it doesn't annoy mom and dad. <laughs> It's a cute sound because as long as you hear it, you know your baby's active. So it kind of is a gauge for mom to know, hey, baby's, baby's into it, baby's awake, baby's alert, baby's this, baby's that. And it's not annoying, it's a cute sound. It's exciting and you see how excited they get as they like, like move it around. It doesn't take much effort. So even if they don't have pincer grasp down yet, it's something that a baby will enjoy. So I never thought that in my almost 37 years I would be on YouTube talking about baby products, but here we are. I'm going to list and link all of these items in the description box below and hopefully mom and dad when we see them later will let us see how baby likes some of these items. Now like I said, I'm not sure if this is something that is universally baby friendly, but this is what worked with my two kids and it worked with my niece and nephew. So all four have very different personalities. They were all four very different babies and all of them fell victim to these toys. Like any and all my vlogs, all of the baby items that I talked about, I will list and link in the description box below. Some of these are the exact same items that I used when my kids were little. Some of them are not, but it's more so the concept of what the item is than the actual brand. So like my niece and nephew didn't use the same brands Daniel and Mateo used. You guys want to see the kitchen. I'm waiting for the boys to come back, but let me show you guys just a little overview of the kitchen. I really don't want to get Hold that thought, my kiddos are here. All right, you guys, I have a producer, Mateo. He's gonna give us a tour of our kitchen. So this is our semi-completed kitchen project. Everything, yeah. for the most part, is done. Except a key essential piece to a kitchen, which is a stove. But that is actually on back order and won't arrive until the end of August. And then little things like up there, do you see the handles, like the hardware that's missing? But for the most part, this is kind of what we have going on. So Mateo's gonna stand back and he's gonna give you sort of like a panoramic shot so you guys can see what the kitchen looks like. We went with Repose Gray from Sherwin-Williams. That's the kitchen cabinet, no, the kitchen wall color. We did a traditional single basin farmhouse sink with matte black hardware and matte black drawer poles and cabinet poles. Our range is a Mila. Um, oh, all right. He's giving me a full, full, a full tour of every, everything that's going on there, huh? <laughs> Show my little coffee station. There's a little liquor station. Oh man. Did you guys have breakfast? <laughs> no. What? I only had bacon. But, but that counts as breakfast. Only had two. Only two. Oof. All right. Well, let's get some breakfast. So like I told you guys in previous vlogs, we knocked down this high rise uh, bar top that we had. We just knocked it completely down. So now it's a really big, so almost like an island. So it's a really big counter. It's still pretty tall. You could see with Daniel standing there. It's still a pretty hey, tall. Baby, I just keep coming today. <laughs> Who else is excited about holding a baby? Look at this. So we knocked down the arch. So we opened up this space. And here's just like an overview. That's our chandelier with the Lucite little details. Like I said, repose gray on the walls. We have pure white as our trim. The color of our floor, I believe, is oyster. If I can find links for this stuff, I'll make sure to link it. Uh, these, this glassware right here was limited edition. Um, it's solo cups. <laughs> we have to buy new glasses and I kind of forgot. These are the dishes I told you guys about from Crate and Barrel. 
thankfully Parker asked our builder to kind of rig our old cooktop in the meantime but the Mila range that we got is a 36 inch that's kind of like a, a drag-in or a drop-in stove it has a big oven and everything so it's all in one spot which will be nice and uh, our backsplash is one of my favorite things about this kitchen this is like the fun part we did fun things with things like backsplash our light fixture maybe even the kitchen sink fixture but otherwise everything else is pretty pretty neutral pretty simple pretty i don't want to say boring i think boring has a bad connotation to it but it's just kind of traditional nothing crazy our tour charts are back up and now we can actually dedicate this side to you know our grown-up beverages <laughs> our non-refrigerated growing up beverages. We reused a lot of our old appliances. So this is our dishwasher, which wasn't very old. We reused our microwave, the same garbage disposal that we had. Oh, I remember what I was gonna tell you, quartz. So we were sold on quartz because they said it's cheaper and durable, but quartz is not my favorite. It scratches easy, it doesn't have a high shine to it. Any dark liquids, coffee, red wine, things like that, stain it. So if you can make room in your budget for a different kind of countertop, marble or even granite. I've had granite every single kitchen I've owned and it's never stained, cracked or chipped or anything. And quartz, We've had it for like five minutes. It's already super scratched. It has no shine to it. It's very dull looking. So I think ultimately I would have saved a little bit of our budget for a different countertop. I think the way that the quartz is marketed to us is what influenced us to choose it. So we were, we were persuaded a little bit, but I think it's just what's in new homes right now. <laughs> Hello. I think it's just what's in new homes right now. I think it's what's trendy right now. I think it's what's all over Pinterest. And I am assuming they assumed that's the look we were going for. So had I known how picky quartz is and how particular and finicky it is, I would have gone with a different countertop for sure. But these are things that you don't really learn until you live in, in, in kitchens, until you use them, until you kind of play with them and find out like farmhouse sink, best choice I've ever done. However, I wouldn't have done a high fixture like this because I wash dishes like an elephant. And so this facilitates my elephant trunk fantasy and I get water everywhere. <laughs> Albeit it's just water, it's no big deal. But as sexy as it looks and as cool and modern as this amazing, I've always wanted a faucet fixture like this because it reminds me of a restaurant or culinary school and I do enjoy it and it gets in there and you can you know, really wash big pots and, and bathe your dogs and things, but it definitely helps make a bigger mess. But that's okay, I love it still and I love the look. It, it definitely, the look, oh, okay. The look. <laughs> and the usefulness of it outweighs the mess that I make. And I'm pretty sure I could control the mess that I make. Right, Bumper? So that's it, you guys. That's our mini morning update. The boys are here. You saw the baby stuff. You saw our mini kitchen update. We just gotta get ready for the week. So hopefully it's a productive Monday. But that's it, that's the update. Like I said, I'll make sure everything is linked for you guys. I'll make sure to link. What happened? You can find me at Walmart. Walmart? Those blankets are from Walmart? Oh, wait. Can I buy you at Walmart or can I buy your blankets at Walmart? Blankies. <laughs> hey you guys, it's 11.30. I don't know if I mentioned this, but we're on our way to hold the baby. <laughs> How creepy do I sound? I'm not like, oh, we're on our way to meet the baby. We're on our way to meet Parker's friend Spit. No, it's like, I'm gonna hold the baby. <laughs> I'm really excited. I have, I don't remember, when was the last time I held a baby? I think Silas, what? and Silas is gonna be like three. That else maybe? That yeah. <laughs> I think Silas is gonna be three, maybe two. So it's been that, he was the last baby I was able to sniff up. We are on our way to lunch. I think it's a hibachi restaurant, kind of yeah, like hibachi. a. hibachi. Yeah, well this guy apparently knows our, our plants. Hibachi. <laughs> the reason I wanted to check in is because I had like six extra minutes to make myself look a little presentable and I haven't worn mascara 
probably in a month and a half. The entire time we've done the kitchen renovation, which I haven't been able to film because of the noise and I didn't want to film in the middle of the night. Hey, mommy's talking, man. Do you guys have a creative, independent, very imaginative child that talks to themselves all day? You're looking at mine right there. He has like full blown active action conversations. It's kind of entertaining when you actually pay attention, <laughs> but I digress. A month and a half, maybe two months that I've worn makeup at all. I took a few minutes to put on cream blush, cream highlighter, and mascara. That's all I'm wearing. Oh, and uh, tinted brow gel. But look at my lashes. Like, sorry about the close up and the nostrils and the texture and everything, but can you talk about that? That is six months of using Revitalash. I do want to alert you though. When you purchase Revitalash, it's kind of alarming because it says that it's $100 for a three month supply. That's the one I bought and I've been using it for six months. Keep in mind that with eye products, they recommend that you use them for about 30 to 60 days before you have to get rid of them. However, I use it when I step out of the shower right before bed. That's when I use mine. No one else uses it, so I feel confident in using a product that long. I don't know if, if you do, or if you're an ophthalmologist, don't tell me. <laughs> but my $98 supply has lasted the entire time that I've had this much growth. And this is what I'm gonna say, just in case you were like, well, your growth isn't that noticeable. When my mom came to visit, she asked me if I got lash extensions. And when I said no, she was like, let me see, I don't believe you. No me quieres decir la verdad. Like, you don't wanna tell me the truth? And I'm like, no, bro, I tried lash extensions once and it was a really big beauty mistake. And then when we were in Mexico, Parker, what'd you say? So what's going on with your lashes? <laughs> They're huge. Why are your lashes so big? I'm like, they are, what else? So even Parker noticed. This is a six month growth, and I think the reason that I like Revitalash is because unlike other serums that take your lashes and make them grow faster, you actually grow more lashes. So where you didn't have lashes before, now you have lashes. So it's actually pretty astonishing. The only thing, my only, only complaint if I were to have to find one, is that your lashes don't just grow straight perfect. They don't just come out perfect like you see on dolls. They grow in any direction. So putting on mascara now is a little bit harder because my mascara smears. <laughs> I can say that now. My mascara is smudging because my lashes are so long. But also because I have to take the time to kind of brush my lashes in the right direction. But yeah, I mean, I think it was a really good $98 well spent, not to mention that Revitalash goes on the um, Amazon Prime sale or whatever and you can get it at a discount. I think their website might also have a good deal. I'm not quite sure. I've just bought it once, so. <laughs> That's it, that's our check-in. The next time you guys see me, I'm either going to be super high on serotonin from holding a baby, or you're gonna actually see the baby. We don't know. What do you think? Do you think the baby wants to be on YouTube? <laughs> He's gonna be like, yeah, put me on YouTube. Let everyone see my majestic cuteness. <laughs> or they could just see your majestic cuteness. <laughs> Are you sitting properly with that seatbelt? Yeah. Yeah. You button the top button. I swear to goodness. I swear to I goodness. Guess. What are you, a gangster? Yeah, he's a gangster, man. I always tell him, don't button the top button. And it's always like, why? And this is Mateo, this is, this is my life with Mateo. He's like, if I'm not supposed to button that button, why is there a button? <laughs> That's his brain. In, in a very raw summary, that's if, there, if I'm not supposed to do that, why, why is it there? Logic, you know? Cancun and all I got was this stupid t-shirt. Okay, three hours later and all I got was a picture 
of Parker holding a baby. <laughs> there is no photographic evidence of me holding a baby. All I have is this memory in my heart. But I do have to say, oh, oh, I hope that's a picture of me holding a baby. Good. More pictures of you holding a baby. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, oh, there it is. Parker's friend actually took a picture of me within the first 30 seconds because that's how quickly it took me to crack, crack, crack the baby. But it was so, so sweet because they came, they were here with the idea that it was literally for me to hold a baby, to sniff a baby, to feed a baby, to burp a, like they let me do the whole shebang. It was so exciting and so refreshing. And it actually felt good because as a first time mom, I still remember the fear of giving my baby to someone else. But I think she felt confident because I mean, I have two that survived, one's nine and one is six, you know, like they're still alive. <laughs> That gives you hope, but it was so much fun. I can confidently say, I think we may have a new set of friends and it just helps that they have a really, really, really cute baby. I sniffed him so hard, you guys. I'd like to publicly apologize to the parents of this amazing, delicious, beautiful baby boy for getting all this stripper glitter on his big coconut. <laughs> looking like a disco ball. So I intentionally used the, I'm trying to think of the brand name. It's like one of those all natural green beauty non-toxic brands. I was like, I'm seeing a baby today. When I put on lip gloss, I used a lanolin, 100% pure lanolin um, chapstick, the Hanalei one that I always tell you guys about. And actually I have it here, hold please. Oh, this stuff here is magic for chap lips and it's what I've been using because for some reason my lips are really, really chap right now. And this is the same type of ingredient that's in nipple cream. So <laughs> it was fine, it's all fine. I, I intentionally dressed for baby, I did my makeup for baby. I'm telling you, Parker gave me full-fledged permission to have an emotional affair with a three-month-old. So cute. Come on. Oh my god. <laughs> that is so creepy. Oh my god. Look at my face. Does this face look like someone that's about to run off and steal a baby? I told Mateo, I was like, hey Mateo, ready to enact Operation Run and Steal a Baby. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Look at him. And they put on this onesie that had sleeves. It looked like he had tattooed sleeves. It was it was the best lunch ever. It was the best lunch ever. But I'm just gonna stay in my high right now. I'm gonna stay on my baby high. Calm down. The uterus is not knocking right now, okay? There's nothing happening right here. We're we're good. I just can't. We gotta we gotta diffuse those comments, you know? They got baby fever. Danny and Parker are gonna have the cutest baby in the whole world. I'm like, mm-mm. It's not happening. You know where my baby is? Right there. That's my baby. That's my baby. You know where my other baby is? Right there, that's my baby. Anyway, we're heading home. We might go to Home Depot. I don't know. We might go home. We definitely have to meal prep. I'm really, really, really craving one of our watermelon cocktails. Oh, yeah. So we gotta make that happen. Holy mackerel, you guys. It's Four o'clock, where has our Sunday gone? And tomorrow is Monday, it's back to usual, it's back to work, it's back to routines. Before we get into something that I have been enjoying a lot of much, let's, let's, you know, let's not focus on the negative. Of course I can focus on all the cooking I have to do right now, but let's focus on something positive. For example, something that I have been enjoying a lot are the Slim Shooters from Slim Chillers. So thank you Slim Chillers for sticking around and sponsoring yet another vlog of ours. Okay, you guys know we went to Mexico almost two weeks ago. And I don't know if we're going to get in trouble for doing this, but we took a picture of their menu and we came back home and we replicated one of their healthy drinks. So their menu is separated into cocktails versus wellness beverages. Well, we saw one of those wellness beverages and I was like, partner, wouldn't that taste good if it had a spiky spiky of something in it? But if I am super honest with you guys, I think Parker and I have just reached that point in our life where maybe we've plateaued when it comes to alcohol, you know, like 
I used to be that girl that was like, shot, 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 and I was fine the next day. And now I'm like, just, can you just give me half a glass of wine? Um, you know, and so I have fun. I enjoy a drink or frozen popsicle every now and then. But I think when it comes to drinks, it's a lot more fun for me now to do something that's a little more gastronomical, if that's a way of saying it. So like Parker and I have been doing this drink, which I'm gonna share with you guys in a second. It's basically blended watermelon, mint, and fresh lime juice. And then it's in the fridge and it's ready to go and it's delicious. But then I was like, Parker, what if we add a slim shooter to it? You know, like sometimes you don't want to glug in the handle of vodka in there. So I was like, what if we add a slim shooter to our wellness beverage? Oxymoron in the best way possible. So I don't know if you guys remember, but we've talked about the skinny freezers, which are the delicious cocktail popsicles, low calorie. We've talked about the freezers, which are the triple layer cream popsicles, but... <laughs> Slim Chillers was like, nah, bro, like we don't need to take a night off. We're gonna design something else that's even more exciting with the Slim Shooters. They come in two varieties. They have the cream and the non-cream. I'm kind of a fan of the non-cream because I can add these to any juice and it's like the perfect enhancer where you don't feel like you're, you know, having a serious cocktail. You're just having a light, fresh, summery, beveragey cocktail. All right, you guys, so let's talk about how Slim Chillers doesn't take a night off. They've recently come out with Slim Shooters, and Slim Shooters are something that you might be like, mm, that's not my cup of tea, Danny, but oh wait, yes it is. It's literally everyone's cup of tea because even though they're marketed as pocket size shooters, yes, you guys, shots, they are actually phenomenal as cocktail enhancers. I can tear it up in the kitchen. Like you tell me you're hungry and I will literally jump into the refrigerator and make something for breakfast. I'm not tooting my own horn, but yesterday's breakfast was amazing. But when it comes to things like a cocktail, I can't follow a recipe. Like don't tell me a, a, an ounce of something and then a splash of whatever. I'm like, no, that's, I, I can't do that. But what I can do is I can blend a watermelon and add an enhancer to it and then I feel like, the cocktail goddess of the world. All right, so we got the Slim Shooter Cream variety, and this comes in six flavors. There's 30 shots in here, you guys. Like, you can make friends, but you don't necessarily have to. And then you have the regular or the non-cream, and these come in five flavors. These come in raspberry lemonade, granny apple, coconut lime, yum, you guys black and blue and grape. And then you have the cream variety which come in peaches and cream, salted caramel, chocolate mint, strawberry cheesecake, banana cream, and oatmeal cookie. So let me show you guys what these look like. Oh yeah, look at that. They don't need to be refrigerated. They are perfect for your pocket, and they're actually ideal for things like concerts, ball games, parties, outdoor barbecues. They don't need to be refrigerated, I repeat. We keep them in the fridge because we like them to be cold and ready to go, but they don't need to be refrigerated. So this is like the, I, I love how I'm holding it backwards the whole time. This is the Granny Apple. This one's delicious. This is black and blue. It, Reminds me of a blue icy. That's kind of what it tastes like to me. Then these are the coconut lime. These actually smell phenomenal. This is the one that I like to use in our watermelon wellness drink. <laughs> I can't say wellness without laughing. So these are the uh, non-cream version. But when I show you the cream ones, they're actually really pretty because you feel like you're having one of those like perfectly curated or um, shaken, look at this. You know those creamy shots that you get when you're in a sorority or like in college or you go to that bar you've never been to and they bring you like a fancy looking shot? No, just, does anyone, was that, was that just me? 
<laughs> Look at this. You know what I'm talking about. You know those shots? that only the girl table orders. Yep, that's exactly what these taste like. And they're super delicious, but like I said, they do have cute packaging, so this might be something that we gotta keep a little bit out of reach from the littles. And of course, like any and all my integrations with Slim Chillers, you guys, it's something you got to enjoy responsibly, and it's something that you can find locally at Sam's Club. So these currently come in a 30 pack which is this marvelous little jug, but they will soon come in smaller packs so that you can kind of taste them before you commit to the 30 pack. But I'll have a link in the description box below. All of the Sam's carry them. Soon, grocery stores and like liquor stores or convenience stores will also have them. But like I said, these don't need to be frozen. These don't need to be chilled. They are pocket shooters for a reason. I just had a thought. You know how, okay, just between us. Hopefully the kids can't hear me. You know how I have a candy drawer in the bedroom and I hide Reese's peanut butter cups in my pad box in the bathroom? TMI, I know, but we're friends here. This could totally be something that I hide there too because they don't need to be refrigerated. Hey, Ernie, is that a good idea? Did your mom have a brilliant idea? What do you think? What do you think about this? What do you think? It's not for dogs, sorry Amiga, sorry. Anyway, I'm gonna show you guys what we've been doing. So I'm gonna show you just quickly how we blend the watermelon. We add some mint, fresh lime juice, and then when you're like, okay, yeah, this is the wellness drink. Let's spike our wellness. That's what we're gonna do right now. Now, if you want a recommendation on uh, combos to do, I can also do that as well. <laughs> All right, you guys, so a hack is to pre-cut your watermelon because this is the power of television or the internet or whatever. But actually it's really handy because if you have watermelon that's ready to go like we do, it's already cold. If your kids want a snack, the watermelon's ready to go. If you want to blend it and make watermelon water, in Spanish it's called agua de sandia, not watermelon juice like in English. It's also cold and ready to go, so all you gotta do is blend it. Now, this is not a recipe. This is two tastes, basically no measurement. And so we have limes and we have mint. And this is one of those drinks that's actually really sweet. It is high calorie because there's a lot of sugar in watermelon. However, you can also dilute it with sparkling water or mineral water like um, Topo Chico. I actually ran to the store on Friday because I thought I was gonna run out of watermelon, but seeing that we already have some here, we'll use this one up for our little drinks while we get our dinner prep ready for the week. I don't think I'm gonna use these many limes, but the limes are actually looking like they wanna quit their life on me, so. We're just gonna use them up and give them a little love. All right, so you guys remember my little juicer from FabFitFun? I love this little guy, it's so buff. Look at this. Y'all know I'm not strong. I have the muscles of olive oil. My dad still calls me that, actually. So you're just gonna juice limes to taste. I'm just seeing how much juice I can get out of these poor limes that have been in our refrigerator since before we went out of town. I'm standing on my tippy toes, can you tell? That's one of the bad things about Vitamixes. It's a little excessive. It's like a behemoth of a blender. It's good. It causes me a lot of trouble. So I have a pack of fresh mint. I've been telling Parker that we need to put mint in our backyard, but we have to be careful because mint is an invasive species. <laughs> if you've ever grown mint, I remember my parents' backyard, every backyard we had growing up, there was like invasive mint everywhere so it's one of those things where like you really have to like it but they would always cook it after um after dinner every dinner my mom would boil some yerba buena or some mint and they drink it and they were like it's for the digestion so i don't know i find it very useful i love it in fresh salads i think it adds a really nice taste and there's just something about mint it almost wakes you up. It's like a perk up mint. So I like to add a lot, but you don't have to. Most people just add a little bit. And then, wait for it, we're just gonna plop our watermelon in here. And I'm gonna do it with so much grace and finesse like you've never seen before. Look at this. Ernie's like, please drop something. Please drop a piece, mama. All right, you guys ready? About to get real loud in here, real loud. This is the best part. This is the best part right here. Ah, such a pretty smell. 
All right, you guys, so we're gonna do two different flavors of the Slim Shooters. The first one that we're gonna try is the Raspberry Lemonade. I thought it would go really well with the lime that's in the wellness drink right now. And then the other flavor that we've tried already and we love is the coconut lime. That's what that one looks like. It's clear, so it's not gonna change the appearance of the cocktail. This one's just gonna deepen the pink of it. But think about it, like if you were to add the blue, or the purple, it definitely might make your cocktails a lot more fun or interesting to look at. So these are really handy because they have little, what are these, like pre-cut, like it has that pre-cut. And so all you do is make a little cut there. We're gonna squeeze out, just make sure everything, oh God. I'm just gonna have a moment with the coconut one. That one tastes so good. And this is the raspberry lemonade. We're gonna pour that one into this one. I don't know if you're recognizing these glasses. Does anyone recognize my glass? You saw nothing. You saw, you saw nothing. You guys know where these glasses are from? These are the good candle um, whiskey glasses. <laughs> so give your watermelon a little stir without spilling it everywhere. And then we're gonna pour it into our glasses. There we got one. And there we got the other. Parker, come here. I would garnish this, but I already got the man, so I don't need to make it look pretty. But if you're trying to impress, you can put a little mint sprig. Sprig of mint? Sprig of mint? Mint of sprig? Sticker. <laughs> stabber sticker. Sticker stabber. Slip of Okay, of. try this one and then try this one. I tried two different slim shooters. And our camera's Ooh. overheating, so make it quick. Maybe I can decide for which one is which. Don't pull a Virgo. Oh, wow. Oh, that's good. It's got the mint in it and the lime. It's very tasty. Ooh, I hit the coconut. <laughs> mm. oh, this one's different. No, it's good. They're just like both so different. Let me see if I can pick the pick the shooter. Okay. Look. Ooh, I like this one. Uh, this one was that one was coconut lime, and this one was the lemonade raspberry. Oh, this one's amazing. I like the coconut. Good, but it's tangy so if you don't like tang lemonades things like that that but it, if you do like tang, it's it delicious. brings up the lime man mm -hmm. it's really good and did you just is it just watermelon that you added watermelon mint lime juice and then a shot it's easy mm -hmm. well what i was telling them is you can have the watermelon the mint and the lime juice blended in the refrigerator in a pitcher and you can have it and then when you get home from work you could have it again but like you can have it again yeah, different, you know what different I mean. styles. <laughs> this is our favorite summer cocktail at the moment, but if you guys want to enhance your beverage, listen, we're not shot, 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 like that's, we're not there anymore. Everybody, maybe a little bit, but if you guys are like, oh man, the concept of shots is a little ugh, daunting or, you know, we're past that point. No one's past the shot point. You just gotta use them differently. It's perspective, you guys. So if you guys wanna track down these uh, Slim Shooters, I will leave a link in the description box below. Track them down to your local Sam's Club, and pretty soon you're gonna be able to find them at all your local grocers and convenience stores. Double. Shot, 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 shot. It looks like he's dancing. <laughs> he's like stepping around. Anyway, the link will be in the description box below. We have wasted way too much of your time and hours, and we have lunch prep to do. So, to prep. lunch prep, dinner prep. At least we have reinforcements. Let's make it gooey a lot easier. We're not going to accomplish anything, are we? No, probably not. Maybe we should take a break. Let's take a break. Take a break before we get started. Go sit by the pool and think about it. <laughs> it's raining, you guys. <laughs> we can pretend we're sitting by the pool. Yeah. We can sit under the deck. Or what is that called? Deck? Patio? What is that called, though? Uh, um, pergola. No, because yeah. it's covered. Just call it pergola. But pergola is open. Yeah, but we're not going to guess the right answer. What is that called, you guys? <laughs> can you tell us what our property is called? <laughs> That'd be helpful. Dang it. I don't know. Do you think the baby's thinking about me? Probably thinking about all that glitter in his head. Looks like he's been in the champagne room. Uh, you guys, I put the RMS, the all natural green beauty, non toxic RMS highlighter palette that I use for our engagement pictures, that really sparkly one. That poor baby. He left and he looked like a disco ball. Yeah, by the time I got to hold the baby after she'd had him for like an hour and a half, it's like just. 
like you got some explaining to do and you get a home, you know what I mean? <laughs> Night with my friends, whatever. Mom, uh, I just went on a play date. It's like this baby's magical, he's sparkling. <laughs> absolute worst I'm sitting here finished editing my vlog and I'm like where's the ending to my vlog where's the outro just digging around digging around digging around can't find it look at that you see that over there see what's happening over there so needless to say I found it here in the future as I'm filming it now because it, it, it hadn't happened <laughs> What's happening over here? Anyway, you guys, I promise I have it together. I promise. Listen, I can keep my children alive. That's just a lot, you know? <laughs> so anything and everything that you guys saw in this vlog will be listed and linked in the description box below. All the baby stuff we talked about, random, right? I did also want to say thank you for listening to my little petite rant at the beginning of this vlog. It's something that's been weighing heavy on my heart these last I would say almost two years, especially these last few months. Like that real, real heavy weight these last few months, I've been feeling it where it's just like, man, we've created this internet society of people that are just mean, you know? It's like, well, it's the internet. You signed up for it. I can say whatever the heck I want. It's like, mm, actually you can't. That's not nice. <laughs> So I really appreciate you guys listening to my mini rant. I also want to say thank you to Slim Chillers for sponsoring this video. Like I told you guys in the previous chapter of this vlog, if you're having trouble tracking down the Slim Shooters, don't forget that they are available at your local Sam's Club. There will be a link in the description box below. They're also going to be available at your local grocery stores and convenience stores very, very soon in 30 packs, different size packs. You know, a lot of you might not need 30, 30 shooters like I do. I just, you know, throw a full on rager on a Tuesday. You know, you might want the eight pack. It, just, just dip your toe, just dip your toe. But if you've been on the fence, the freezers are really good. The skinny freezers are definitely my favorite. Those have gotten me in, in, into, into some trouble. Drink them responsibly and anything and everything you saw in this vlog will be listed and linked in the description box of this video. If you do use those affiliate links, if you do click on them, know that I really appreciate it so much, you guys. It's so much work. The commission is sometimes laughable, but it's definitely worth it because I know what it's like to watch someone's video and want everything that I see. So I try my best to link that stuff for you. So if you find it useful, thank you so much for using them. Um, but I think that's it. Que mucho se despide. I always make these outros unnecessarily way too long, but uh, I, I do everything way too, way too long. I love you guys so much, and you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye, guys. You know, you have been in the outro of my video this whole time and you have been snoring like a big, big, big orangutan. Yes, you have. My little gorilla snore machine. Are you my gorilla snore machine? Yes, you are. Say hi to your friends. Say hi, friends. I'm hanging in there. Yes, I am. Because I'm so handsome. Because I'm so handsome. Hi, the double. Because I'm a handsome boy. Oh, I'm a handsome boy. I love you. Yes, I do. I love you so much.